What's up guys, welcome to Visualization. Nestor Adrian Sen here again. Today guys, today I'm gonna show you how to handle blanks with DAX in Power BI Desktop. Hey, before you get started, if this is the first time that you stop by this channel, Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications on my new Power BI content. So now, are you ready? Let's do this. For today's tutorial, we have two different points. The first one, we're going to learn about these two powerful functions, if and coalesce. And finally, guys, we're going to put everything into practice. We have a really, really nice case here. So now let's move on to the first point. Okay, so before we go into the case, let's learn more about these two functions, okay? The first function is the if function. Like it says right here, this function checks a condition and returns one value when it's true, otherwise it returns a second value. As you guys can see here, this is the syntax, real quick. It has three different parts here, three different pieces, the logical test, it can be any value or expression that can be evaluated to true or false. And then the other piece here, value if true, this is the value that it's returned if the logical test is true. And finally, value if false, and this is actually optional, but it gives you the value if the logical test is false if we don't put anything there we get blank okay so really really important concept here so now let's take a look at the call is function here so this function is quite new it was introduced to power bi in 2020 this function returns the first expression that does not evaluate to blank if all expressions evaluate to blank blank is returned as you guys can see here this is the syntax and we have many expressions right so now let's take a look at the expression here what is an expression so an expression here it can be any dax expression that returns a scalar expression for those who are not familiar with scalar values a scalar value refers to a single numeric value it is usually an integer but it can be a decimal as well so now that we have these concepts as a reference, let's move on to the case. Okay, so we have one question here. This is quite straightforward, my friends. The question is, find the total sales amount for each channel. If a channel doesn't have sales, show no data available yet. Hint, use if and call is to solve this question. Of course, here we're gonna use these two functions separately, okay? So what's next here? Let's go to Power BI Desktop. Okay, so here we are in Power BI Desktop and we have already a couple of visuals here. So real quick, what do we have? So we have two different tables. We have a blanks table. Check this out. It's right there. We have three different columns here. We can take a look at this data. We've got the data here, select blanks. These are the two columns that we have, ID, channel, and sales amount. As you can see here, we have different channels, three different channels. And if you are curious, for email, for example, we have nothing. So, so please keep that in mind, okay? All right, so that's what we have for blank. And then we also have Another table called DAX measures. You guys might be familiar with this type of table. This is a table to store measures. And we already have a measure here. So here we have this measure. We are basically summing every single sales amount, right? So now what else do we have? We have already a slicer here. This is the channel slicer. And we also have this table here. Basically, this is the same information that we just saw right here as part of data. We also have a card here. It's giving us the sales amount and we are using this measure right here. Okay, what is the goal here? What are we trying to solve, right? So here, if we play with these visuals, 
let's play with this slicer real quick. So let's select email, for example. Boom. This is what's happening. See right here? We don't have any values. We haven't made any sales with this channel, right? And that's why we have blank. As a result, we are getting blank here, which is fine, right? But if you want to be more professional, how about if we replace this with no data available yet? We can do that. We're going to be using these two functions, right? The if and the call is function. So that's the goal. And then for phone, for example, we have values. For store, we also have values. We don't have any issues there. The only issue is email. We don't have any cells yet. And as a result, we are getting hit blank, which in my opinion, this is hurting my eyes, right? As a Power BI user. So I want to make this more professional. And that's why, like I said, we're going to be using if and qualities. So let's do that. Let's remove this filter real quick. There you go. So what you're going to do next is create a new measure, new measure here. And we're going to call this e cells. How about that? OK, check this out, my friend. OK, so we're going to use the e function here. And here we're going to say, hey, let's use the measure that we already created, which is the sales measure, right? Remember that? This is the measure that we already created. So we are saying if this measure is giving us blank, if this measure is giving us blank, let's select this one right here. So what happens if it's true? If it's true, give us this result right here. No data available yet. No data available. There you go. Because this is text, I'm using quotation marks right there, double quotation marks. If this is not the case, please give me the sales measure. All right. So this one right here. And then let's hit shift enter close parenthesis there you go let's approve this change and let's see what happens here all right it's loading perfect awesome so let's see if this is working my friends let's duplicate this card Control c Control v right there check this out make this a little bit bigger here and let's replace this measure with this measure right here. Uh-huh. See right there? I can see values there. Check this out. Let's hit email and let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Let's expand this. There you go. See right now? I can see that when we have as a result blank, it's giving me instead no data available yet. And this is more professional in my opinion. Okay, so that's what we wanted to achieve here. So we are good here and let's select the other one just for the example. Same result here, same result here. Perfect, so it's working guys. So now let's solve the same question, but let's use Coalice instead. Same strategy here, new measure. All right, so let's call this Coalice cells. How about that? All right, so we're going to use this function called Coalice. Like I said, it's right here. There you go. And, and here we can use the same measure, right? The measure that we had already in the model. Or we can use sum again. Let's use sum right here. Because we're going to sum right here sales amount. Remember that? We can do that. There you go. It doesn't matter here. And then the next thing that we want to do here is if it's giving me blank so that's what's happening here if this expression is giving me blank so what do we need to do here we need to put this value no data available yet let's do that and let's see what happens my friends there you go all right and that's it guys quite straightforward so let's hit enter and let's see what happens mm -hmm. 
it seems like it's working. So now what we're going to do here is the following. Control C, Control V. We're going to copy this car here again. And then we're going to select the new measure, Coalice Cells. And let's see what happens. There you go. It seems like it's giving me results here, which is good. And now let's play with the filters. Email. Boom. There you go, my friends. So this is the original measure that we have here. It's giving me blank. And then the other two ones, it's giving me no data available yet, which is what we want, right? Perfect. So this is working, guys. And now we can also keep playing with the other filters here. It's giving me, guys, the same results here, OK? Perfect. So let's remove these changes. So now, what do you think? Do you like it? So now you might have this question, which one should I use? If it's giving me the same results, should I use E or should I use Qualys? Well, in my opinion, if you want to see a more readable code, you might want to use Qualys. OK, check this out again. So the code is more readable compared to if. It will make a huge difference if you have more pieces in the code, of course. All right. So now, guys, let's go back to our presentation and see what else we have there. Guys, that was it. I hope you found this tip helpful. If so, as always, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. Thank you, guys, and see you in my next tutorial.